Hey there, royal warriors. I hope you're all having a fantastic day again today. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. This is your royal boy Ben back here, and today we're diving into some absolutely explosive news that shows just how far certain people will go to try to manipulate their way back into relevance. Make yourself comfortable, because this is a story that's going to make your blood boil. So now, let me tell you what's happening at the historic Althorpe House, the childhood home of our beloved Princess Diana and current residence of Earl Spencer. As many of you know, Earl Spencer and Countess Karen Spencer recently announced their divorce after 14 years of marriage. It's a sensitive situation that deserves to be handled with dignity and respect. But apparently, someone didn't get that memo. And would you believe that in the middle of this delicate family situation, our favorite fame-hungry former actress from across the pond apparently thought this would be the perfect time to swoop in? That's right, according to sources, Meghan Markle allegedly tried to use this private family matter as an opportunity to gain access to Althorpe House, Diana's childhood home. Pathetic, right? So, now, let me paint you a picture of just how audacious this move is. Here's Countess Spencer dealing with the emotional challenge of leaving her home of 14 years, trying to find accommodation for her beloved animals, seven horses, two sheep, four cats, and a dog. It's a difficult, personal moment in anyone's life. And what does Megan do? Apparently tries to swoop in like some sort of self-appointed savior with an offer to help that, let's be honest, probably came with more strings attached than a puppet show. But our Countess Spencer? She saw right through it. Reports suggest she shut down this manipulative approach faster than you can say, Markle Sparkle. And honestly, can we just take a moment to applaud her for that? Because this right here shows exactly why the British aristocracy has survived for centuries. They can spot an opportunist from a mile away. You know what makes this even more fascinating? The timing. Here's Meghan, potentially facing exile from her adopted home in America, thanks to Donald Trump's victory, suddenly showing interest in one of the most historically significant properties in British aristocratic history. Coincidence? I think not. Let's talk about Althorpe House for a moment. This isn't just any stately home. This is where Princess Diana grew up, where she learned the values of compassion and service that made her the people's princess. This is where she's laid to rest, on that beautiful island in the middle of the lake. This is sacred ground for those who truly love Diana, not just those who want to exploit her memory for Netflix documentaries and book deals. And speaking of Diana's memory, can we talk about how different her two sons have handled her legacy? While William honors his mother by continuing her charitable work, by raising his children with the values she held dear, by protecting the monarchy she wanted her son to lead one day, what does Harry do? He allows his wife to constantly weaponize his mother's memory to draw false parallels between them, to use Diana's tragic story as a shield against any criticism. You know what really gets me? The sheer audacity of thinking you can waltz in during someone's difficult time and try to manipulate the situation to your advantage. It's giving very strong, trying to buy your way into British aristocracy vibes, isn't it? But here's the thing about British nobility. It's not just about the properties and the titles, it's about dignity, about duty, about understanding and respecting history. Let me share something personal with you all. I have connections in the aristocratic circles, and the whispers I'm hearing about this attempted power play are absolutely scathing. The general consensus seems to be that this is just another example of someone trying to buy what can't be bought. Authenticity and legitimate connection to British heritage. And can we talk about the timing? Just when things are looking increasingly precarious for the Sussexes in America, suddenly 
there's this interest in establishing a foothold back in Britain. It's like watching a really bad chess player try to plan three moves ahead, but everyone can see what they're doing. The contrast between Countess Spencer's handling of her situation and the Sussex approach to, well, everything couldn't be more stark. Look at how Karen Spencer is managing her transition, with grace, with dignity, focusing on the well-being of her animals, sharing honest but measured updates with her followers. No victim narrative, no dramatic declarations, just quiet strength and resilience. Let's take a moment to appreciate Earl Spencer too. Despite everything that's happened in his personal life, he's maintained his dignity, continued his role as guardian of his sister's legacy, and managed to find happiness again without turning it into a media circus. That's class, folks. That's how you handle personal matters when you're part of the British aristocracy. And speaking of handling things with class, let's look at how the working royals are carrying themselves through all this drama. While certain people are allegedly trying to scheme their way back into British society, William and Catherine are quietly getting on with their duties, raising their children, and showing what real royal work looks like. You know what's particularly interesting about this situation? The way it highlights the fundamental misunderstanding that Meghan seems to have about British society. You can't just buy your way into acceptance. You can't manipulate your way into respect. These things are earned through years of service, through understanding and respecting traditions, through putting duty before self-interest. Let's talk about the bigger picture here. What we're seeing is a pattern of behavior that's become all too familiar. When things get tough in one place, instead of dealing with the consequences of their actions, certain people try to find an escape route. First, it was Britain to Canada, then Canada to America. And now that America might not be so welcoming anymore, what's the plan? And can we discuss the absolute irony of trying to establish connections with Althorpe House? This is the childhood home of the woman whose memory they've repeatedly used for their own gain. It's like they're running out of Diana-related content to exploit and are now trying to literally buy their way into her history. The reaction from the British public to this news has been exactly what you'd expect, a mixture of outrage and disbelief. Because here's the thing. The British people understand what Althorpe represents. It's not just a stately home. It's a piece of our history, a connection to a beloved princess who was taken from us too soon. You know what's particularly galling about this whole situation? The way it shows complete disregard for the personal nature of divorce and family transitions. Countess Spencer is going through a significant life change, trying to maintain stability for her daughter looking after her beloved animals, and someone thought this was an appropriate time to try to insert themselves into the situation. The lack of basic human empathy is staggering. Let's talk about what this reveals about the Sussex strategy moving forward. With their Hollywood dreams potentially crumbling, their Netflix content failing to make the impact they hoped for, their Spotify deal up in smoke, are we seeing the beginning of a pivot? An attempt to re-establish themselves in British society now that American society might not be so welcoming? The thing is, British society has a long memory. We remember how they treated the late Queen in her final years. We remember the Oprah interview, the constant attacks on the institution, the way they've repeatedly tried to undermine the monarchy while still profiting from their royal connections. And speaking of royal connections, let's discuss Prince Harry's relationship with Earl Spencer. Charles Spencer has always been protective of Diana's memory and legacy. He's the one who gave that powerful speech at her funeral, promising to protect her sons. How must he feel about all this? About one of those sons allowing his mother's memory to be constantly exploited for profit? You know what's fascinating? The way this story intersects with the larger narrative of the Sussexes' gradual fall from grace. Think about it. When they first left for America, 
They had everything going for them. Hollywood was excited. The media was sympathetic. They had huge deals with major companies. And now, they're potentially facing exile from America, their content deals are drying up, and they're allegedly trying to manipulate their way back into British society. Let's talk about the absolute brass neck of thinking you can swoop in during someone's vulnerable moment and try to turn it to your advantage. It's like watching a really bad episode of a reality show, except these are real people's lives we're talking about. The reaction from the aristocratic circles has been particularly interesting. You see, contrary to what certain people might think, British nobility isn't just about big houses and fancy titles. It's about understanding your role in preserving history, about maintaining dignity even in difficult times, about putting duty before self-interest. And can we talk about how this affects William? Althorpe isn't just any stately home to him. It's where his mother grew up, where she's laid to rest. The idea that someone might try to use this place, this sacred ground, for their own agenda must be absolutely infuriating for him. You know what really strikes me about this whole situation? The way it highlights the fundamental difference between earning something and trying to buy it. Catherine, for example, has earned her place in British society through years of dedication, through understanding and respecting traditions, through putting the institution before herself. You can't just write a check for that kind of respect. Let's discuss the implications for the future. If America becomes less welcoming under Trump's presidency, what's the game plan? Because if this alleged attempt to ingratiate themselves with Althorpe is any indication, it seems like someone's trying to keep their options open. The thing about British society is that it can spot authenticity, or the lack of it, from a mile away. We've seen how the British public has embraced Queen Camilla, for example, because despite all the challenges, she's shown genuine dedication to her role and genuine support for the King. And speaking of King Charles, how must he feel watching all this unfold? After everything that's happened, after all the attacks and accusations, to see someone potentially trying to manipulate their way back into British society through his former sister-in-law's home, it must be exhausting. You know what's particularly sad about all this? The way it affects the next generation. Imagine being Princess Charlotte, Prince George, or Prince Louis, growing up and eventually reading about how their uncle and his wife treated their family's legacy. Or think about Lady Charlotte Diana Spencer, Countess Spencer's daughter, having to deal with this drama during what's already a challenging time for her family. The contrast between how different people handle difficult situations is really telling, isn't it? While Countess Spencer is focused on finding a suitable home for her animals, maintaining stability for her daughter, and handling her transition with dignity, others seem more interested in how they can turn personal situations to their advantage. Let's talk about the potential fallout from this. The aristocratic circles in Britain are small. Everyone knows everyone, and news travels fast. The fact that Countess Spencer allegedly shut down this approach so firmly sends a very clear message about how these kinds of manipulative tactics are viewed. And can we discuss the sheer hubris of thinking you can buy your way into British society? This isn't Hollywood where everything has a price tag. The respect of British society is earned through actions, through understanding and honoring traditions, through putting duty before self-interest. You know what really gets me? The way this whole situation shows such a fundamental misunderstanding of what places like Althorpe represent. These aren't just fancy houses you can buy your way into. They're pieces of living history maintained and preserved by families who understand their role as custodians of British heritage. The reaction from my sources in aristocratic circles has been fascinating. There's a sort of grim amusement at the idea that anyone would think they could manipulate their way into this world. Because here's the thing. British nobility might have its faults, but it can spot an opportunist from a mile away. 
Let's talk about what this reveals about the broader strategy at play. With their American dream potentially crumbling, their Netflix content failing to make waves, their Spotify deal dead in the water, are we seeing desperate attempts to establish new connections, to create new narratives, to find new ways to stay relevant? The thing about British society is that it has a very long memory. We remember how they treated the late Queen in her final years. We remember the Oprah interview, the constant attacks on the institution, the way they've repeatedly tried to undermine the monarchy while still profiting from their royal connections. And speaking of connections, let's discuss how this affects the relationship between Harry and his uncle. Charles Spencer has always been protective of Diana's memory and legacy. How must he feel about all this? About one of Diana's sons allowing his mother's memory to be constantly exploited for profit? You know what's particularly telling about this whole situation? The timing. Just when things are looking increasingly precarious in America, suddenly there's this interest in establishing connections back in Britain. It's like watching a really bad chess player try to plan three moves ahead, but everyone can see what they're doing. Let's talk about the absolute brass neck of thinking you can swoop in during someone's vulnerable moment and try to turn it to your advantage. It's like watching a really bad episode of a reality show, except these are real people's lives we're talking about. The thing about British society is that it can spot authenticity, or the lack of it, a mile away. Look at how the British public has embraced Queen Camilla, for example, because despite all the challenges, she's shown genuine dedication to her role and genuine support for the king. And speaking of the king, how must he feel watching all this unfold? After everything that's happened, after all the attacks and accusations, to see someone potentially trying to manipulate their way back into British society through his former sister-in-law's home, it must be exhausting. As we wrap up today's discussion, I want to hear from all of you. What do you think about this latest development? Do you believe this was a genuine attempt to help? or just another calculated move. Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more royal analysis. Remember my friends, in the end, truth and authenticity always prevail. You can't buy class, you can't manipulate your way into respect, and you certainly can't fool the British aristocracy. Stay royal everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.